Say What, an art supply that makes gorgeous gradients for you. It seems so. Hey Grains, today we're going to be looking at the Blendy Pens. I thought these were knockoffs from the Chameleon markers, but it turns out that this is the exact same company. So I'm really curious to see because Chameleon markers are about a hundred dollars for a set. But this here is about twenty dollars and it boasts 276 color combinations. I am really curious to know if the salt is just gonna come out and play. If you're not sure what blendy pens or chameleon concept is, the idea is that they give you the opportunity to put two colors tip to tip. <laughs> And you can create gorgeous gradients. I'll link Jazza's video of a full review of the $100 kit in the description box below, so make sure you check it out after you watch this video. So we're going to be looking at the cheaper version. I tried to find more information on their website whether or not this is alcohol ink, because that's usually what professional people use. I'm doing this because I use them and I'm not professional. But it turns out that this is not alcohol ink. In fact, as you can see on the description here, it is watercolor ink that is washable. All right, enough delaying. Let's see what we get inside. Here's what we get inside. 24 blendy colors. Even though they look like one marker, they're actually just two colors on each other. 10 really gorgeous pieces. I really love these kinds of art styles, so I'm really happy that they included these. They have everything from a person in this huge mecha suit, a seemingly fairy on a squirrel, to mermaids. I love the fact that they included black paper and that you get the color because that will make the colors pop even more. We also get an airbrush that you can use to ruin your lungs. We also get some stencils. I'm not a huge fan of stencils, but we're gonna test them out. As well as a really cool doodle type portfolio. I love this portfolio so much. So far, my hopes are up here, but y'all know the salt could show up anytime. Before we get on to the blendy part of the pen, I don't know what this is, but it's a thing now. And before some of you say, Jesse, your hands are all dirty. No, your hands are dirty. Uh, if you remember last video, I did a squishy make unmakeover, and I did say that these paints stay on my hand for like three days, so. We're the next day. It has two more days before it goes away, and I did shower, I did try to scrub them off, but I didn't want to rip, rip off my skin! <coughs> Salt wants to play. Salt, stay down. Alright, so before we begin. I want to swatch these colors and see what they actually are because one of the flaws that I can see already is that none of the pens have any color names. We can see that there's a bit of a swatch up here, but how close is the actual top to the color on the inside? I am very curious. Well, you make me wave things at you. What did you do? Confess to the salt people. We are all grains and we will all not judge you because we love you. So let's go ahead and swatch these because they're just no names, no numbers, which makes it even difficult to swatch because I, I just won't know which one is which. So let me, let me label them. A little longer than a few minutes later. So now that I've put numbers on the colors, which is so counterproductive, I'm pretty sure they could have put some color names on there. And I also made a chart, forgive my lines, I know they're not that straight, but don't, don't. I think it's time for us to color swatch and see whether or not the tips of the actual markers are similar to the colors that are inside. So here we go with number one, which according to the top should be a very deep purple. And it is. Ooh, that is really deep purple. It is a very rich deep purple. Is it similar to the cat? It's darker. Another thing to note is that even though together it seems like the ultimate huge pen, taking it out makes it so that you have a really tiny pen or marker in your hands. So you gotta kind of m maneuver around it. Let's see number two. It's supposed to be a very light kind of lilac-y color and it seems pretty close. All right, I'm going to swatch each and every one of them and we're going to take a look at whether or not they are similar, darker, lighter. As you see, most of the colors seem pretty close to their actual cap. Some a little darker, some a little lighter, but overall, the gist of it is, is pretty close enough. Except there are three colors that really bug me because they seem really off the mark. The 
the first one is number 13. So as you can see on the cap itself, it's supposed to be a deep dark brown. But on the actual sheet, it is way closer to a black color maybe a hint of brown. So that is that is quite off the mark. And then there's the gray, which is supposed to be a neutral gray, but this one is leaning closer to a cool gray. And then the last one here, as you can see, it seems kind of like a creamy milk chocolatey brown, but we're getting more of a cappuccino brown, which is good. It's not bad because we get more variety for skin tones. The blendy part. I'm going to take two colors that are similar to each other to see the transition. And then I'm going to take two colors that are so far apart to see if we can do a transition, kind of like black to yellow. But first, let's start with color 3 and 6, so there's no color names. Alright, so according to the instructions over here, the color on top transfers to the color on the bottom. So I want it to go from light to dark, which means light should be on top, right? I believe so. So let's take number 3, where's number 6? Okay, here's number 6. And now I need a casing, so three on top, six on the bottom. Okay, now that both our pieces are inside, they should both make it click. And then we're supposed to twist them, one towards this way and the other one towards the other way. It's not twisting. Oh, I'm supposed to hold it. Okay, I understand now. I thought we were supposed to twist and then leave it, but apparently you're supposed to twist and hold the pressure. So here's the twist. And as you can see, the tips are touching. So we count five seconds, three, two, one, let it go. And you can see that the tip of the dark blue one has some of the light blue. So number three is on number six. Well, these numbers are really confusing. Chameleon, put color names, please. So remember, we're trying to get this color to that color and then everything else in between. And off we go. Oh, that does not start too well. That did not start too well at all. So our transition color is really pretty sad. It just looks like I mishmashed two tips together and I'm not getting a transition. Let me hold the transition for a little longer. Meanwhile, let me just mention that while I'm coloring with this, there's no cap on this one, which means that it has the potential of actually drying out. Chameleon? I probably would have rather that each marker had its own cap and then the marker fusions be separate. Otherwise, if I'm spending, let's say, five minutes, this is getting dry for five minutes. All right, I'm going to leave the, the, the thing for longer because it says the longer you keep it, the more intense it is. So I'm going to keep it for about 10 seconds. All right, so this one is five seconds. Don't judge my handwriting. I want to see yours first. All right, and here we go after I actually made it for longer. So 15 seconds. Let's see the difference that we get now. And that's already much better, but not as intense as they claimed it would be. And let's do 30 seconds just for lulz. So in theory, this should be a much smoother type gradient. And it's already starting much better. It feels like maybe the five second is just not good enough. Maybe a marketing scheme, but between 15 and 30 seconds, that's where the magic happens. Because the base of this marker is water as opposed to alcohol markers, it's definite that you're going to be getting streaks. Normally with alcohol markers, you can go on top of it a second time to remove the streaks, but because we're doing gradients over here, it's going to be close to impossible getting the exact grading at the exact same time. So the streaks are almost inevitable. You can even see it on their commercial. Let's take a look. It's yellow and green, make a nature scene. Mix yellow and orange and then add red. Make a monster with a flaming head. <laughs> All right, so let's pause the scene where there's the monster with the flaming head. You can see that there are streaks. So it's something that you're just going to have to be okay with, or, you know, you would have to invest into the more expensive markers. But don't, don't do that just yet. Now I'm curious to see if there was any contamination on the lighter color that was on top, and the answer is no. It's fine. So as I mentioned, now I want to do a more dramatic color shift, which is going to be with a yellow, which is going to number 17, and black. Let's see that kind of transition and how much of the contamination of the cross colors is going to happen. Why did I distract myself? So here's the yellow and black. And as you can see, the majority of the yellow's tip has turned black. So I'm really curious to see the black to yellow. That's, that's going to be pretty cool. Or at least I think in my head. 
Before I show you the full transition, it seems like it does taint the lighter color, so there's still black on the tip of the yellow, even though I've removed as much black as I could. So keep that in mind, your markers will not always stay pretty. So here's the transition between the black and yellow. It's very splotchy, it's not even, it's definitely not the same grade as their alcohol markers, obviously, otherwise this one wouldn't be $20 versus $100. But I still feel like they could have done this with alcohol markers and not necessarily cheap out on the kind of gradients we would get. I mean, technically, this is really not holding that much alcohol ink, so it could have worked. Oh, and by the way, this long transition over here, the, the gradient, I mean, wow, English number one. I held this for 15 seconds which is crazy because I did that also up here and you can see that it was a much shorter transition so I guess you'll have to test out different colors have different reactions light to dark versus dark to light all right we still have two whole features to test out so now we tested the vibrancy and the colors and the gradients time to try the, the spray and, and, and maybe inhale some markers don't inhale markers don't do it don't be a Jackie no, 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 no. All right, for the airbrush, let's take a look at the commercial again because there's quite an interesting claim. Color in a whole new way. Just blow to create a blended color spray. With the new Blendy Pen airbrush, you can turn all your Blendy Pens into airbrushes to make amazing blended airbrush art. So let's pause again on that image that has four different gradients within one marker, which means in theory, I should be able to put four different colors on top of one marker and then create an airbrush. Let's test it first without the airbrush. So my plan will be to go from yellow to red to blue to dark green which means that every other color has to be on top of the dark green since it's going to be our last color. All right, let's, let's do it because I'm pretty skeptical. I don't know why I'm talking like that, but I say I'm back. Time to do some testing. All right, so now that all the tips have been touched, It is so hard for me to keep saying this sentence. Please get your mind out of the gutter. We should in all theory have four different colors. So let's start from here and see if we can get that transition that they get in the video itself. So we're starting off with red, even though I did start with yellow. Well, technically it should have started with yellow. And that is still a really cool effect. So as you can see, yellow doesn't show up as much. It's kind of there, almost like a, an orange. And then it transitions into the red. The red turns into a purple, which turns into the blue, which again turns into the green. This is a really cool effect. And I feel like this might be probably a bigger strength than the gradients. Now I'm curious to see it as an airbrush. The basic airbrush stencils that come in this kit are boring at best. So we're just going to have to do the dragon because dragons are cool. That is a pretty cool rainbowy effect on here. All right, let's get that stuff onto the spray. All right, so here, here we go. It's gonna hopefully work, but let me hold the stencil down. I'm so nip. What an angle! Hello, nice to meet you down here. Welcome to my five foot level. <laughs> oh, that's hard to push out. <laughs> let's keep going. Where's the gradient? <coughs> it's it's quite quite the exercise. I'm hoping to get to that light blue soon. Oh, that was that was quite the endeavor. I think I need an Advil. All right, time for the reveal, and it is pretty cool. However, I did get a similar effect with the Crayola airbrush. So if you're looking for a really cool airbrush effect, you can get it with any other thing, kind of like the Crayola one as well. So it doesn't make it any special, especially, especially that. I did put three colors in there, but all three colors did not show up. I feel like it went from red to light blue, and it didn't show the actual dark blue. With an airbrush that you can put multiple markers into, I feel like you have more control over what colors can dominate which areas. Here, you're left pretty much at their own mercy. Please make the yellow appear. The answer is no. No yellow for you. Actually, that's what I put in the middle. I put yellow. No yellow for us. It wasn't blue, it was yellow. See, it's, it's hard to keep track of these colors. Because they all come in a, in, in a set where you don't have them individually to be able to put the colors aside. It's like you, you always have to put them. I don't know. I would like my markers to be separate, please. 
now for the final test. Let's color in this image. It is by far my favorite. Did I scan it to keep a copy for myself for later use? You bet your butt I did. So, let's color the entire thing and try to include as many gradients as possible where it makes sense. So as I'm coloring, you can see I'm starting to divide some parts into the darker colors and some parts into the lighter colors. I feel like I had way more control doing that than when I tried to do gradients, especially when it comes to trying to do gradients on the tail. It just seemed like an absolute mess. And of course I tried in all the other different places and I had no control whatsoever even if I did the 5 seconds. When I extended it to 10 seconds, sometimes it wouldn't even appear until much later in the illustration. Something to note also is that the paper they give us is not compatible with their own markers. As I'm coloring, the paper is starting to tear. That is, such a pain in the butt. Why? is their own paper tearing with their own supplies. As the designs start coming out when you're coloring, it is a really cool effect. I have to admit, I have no hate on that whatsoever. I absolutely loved it. I think the gradient part for me really did annoy me the most. I, I don't know why there's no better way, because it really wasn't a gradient. It was a change from one color to the next. I think the type of ink that they chose for this was probably not a good idea. And there's already a really big flaw. So just by using the paper they gave us, you can see that the tips are starting to kind of be worn down. And as I'm twisting it, here it is in full twist. As you get closer, you'll see that there's starting to be a gap between the two markers. So at this point, they're not touching anymore. The space is there. It's, it's very small, but it's there. And the more we use the markers, the bigger the space is going to get. That's a pretty bad flaw, Chameleon. And so... What is my verdict on the Chameleon's blendy pens? When it comes to the gradients, I would definitely give it a thumbs down. I feel like the kind of ink that they chose was not the right one. For the airbrush, sure, if you have the lung capacity, it's, it's fine. The colors themselves are super bright, 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 brilliant, super bright. They're really bright, they're very vibrant. I really like them. If I were looking for water-based markers, yeah, I, I would say, yeah. And how about the illustrations that come in this box? They are absolutely gorgeous. I would love to scan all of these, print them on the proper kind of paper, and use them with alcohol inks. In addition to that, I feel like Chameleon could do better. Yes, it's $20. Yes, I think, personally, I'm, I'm conflicted, okay? I'm conflicted. Don't hold it against me. I personally feel like this would definitely be worth it for a kid, but I also feel like Chameleon can make an entry level for people who are beginners. Having an alcohol-based blendy pen with a small cartridge is something they can do, especially that they actually have all of these materials readily available. Also, please put color numbers. That was so tedious for me to have to do it for you guys. So overall, because I'm conflicted, I feel like I would lean more towards the yes, but just a little bit. So with that said, this kit gets a six and a half on 10 dorks. I love the illustrations. I love the portfolio, this box over here. Colors are great, but the blending is gimmicky at best. Let me know what you grains think. Have you ever tried them or not? And make sure that you do check out Jazza's $100 chameleon markers, the one for adults. I don't like labeling these things because I feel like any kind of art and craft supply should be good for all ages. So Jazza's video is in the description box below. Hey you, are you human? Then you must be Harry. Hello Harry, I'm Jackie Tingnavitz. <laughs> Being of Egyptian origins, we're, we're pretty hairy people. Why did I just admit that on camera? I know exactly what. Today's sponsor is Dollar Shave Club. Now before you think, but Jackie, and the shaving things are just for men. The answer is no. The good thing about Dollar Shave Club is that it's not just for shaving products. Many of you know that I've been complaining about my hair for the longest time ever. But what I discovered is that shampoo alone is not enough for hair that's like mine, which is pretty thin. What I mean is oily. So when I discovered that Dollar Shave Club actually has a hair and scalp shampoo, I knew that this was the right product for me. And to be honest, since I started using a hair and scalp shampoo, I've been feeling a lot less self-conscious about how flat my hair gets and oily by the end of the day. If you have luscious hair and you don't care about lusciousness of the hair, Dollar Shave Club also has oral care products, skin products, and yes, butt wipes for all those crap kits that we review. So not only 
only do they make it easier for you grains by shipping the stuff straight to your door, but the more you buy, the more you save. They call it... Their handsome discount. And right now they have an amazing deal. You can either get their shower or shave or oral starter set for only $5. After that, their restock box ships with regular sized items at the regular price. Feel free to get this exclusive deal and check it out. I'll leave the link in the description box below. dollarshaveclub.com slash nerdycrafter. So thank you so much Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring the video. If you want to watch my squishy unmakeover makeover kind of thing, make sure you check it out up here. And if you want to watch a video YouTube thinks is just right for your saltiness, check it out down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.